Hey guys, it's Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we negotiate at coin shows using Graysheet and also how we uh, use CoinFax as well. But stay tuned and enjoy the video. We also have some coins to show you. And for everybody that needs a refresher on what Graysheet and CoinFax is, basically Coin, uh, Graysheet is uh, you know something that you get in the mail every single month. You actually have to pay uh, you know 30 bucks a month or something like that, and it basically offers you a lot of different bids that uh, other either coin dealers or coin collectors would sell their coins at. Uh, most of the time, this is a very conservative number, um, so it gives you kind of a, a footing in the space, and a lot of coin dealers end up using this. Uh, you can end up buying this either, or you can buy this as a hard copy and then they also give you a digital version. You can download the app. Um, so very useful uh, tool. We'll talk a little bit about this later when we talk about negotiating. If you guys are going to be using CoinFax, which I recommend in this video that you use both. CoinFax is basically uh, something that's generated by PCGS. And basically what they do is they, they put a bunch of information about certain coins in there, about commemoratives, peace dollars, anything that you would think of. They offer populations, they offer sold comps. There's a lot of information that you can find in there and it really does help counteract what Graysheet tells you. And it can really help you uh, price your coins at the end of the day. But now that we have those refreshers out of the way, let's talk about how to negotiate at coin shows. So when you're at a coin show, this thing is the Bible. And what the Bible does, basically, is that when you go to every table, every dealer is going to be looking at this for how they price coins. But the thing about most collectors is that they're going to be using price guide or coin facts on how they price coins and how they buy coins. And the way that we actually end up negotiating is that we have both at our disposal. And the, the normally how it works is that either gray sheet is low on a coin, which means they value this coin lower than what, sell, what they're selling for, or they have uh, the, those sold comps are, are too low and gray sheets too high. So there's kind of two different scenarios that you see uh, when using both of these. And the way that I would actually negotiate myself is so say if I come up to a table and you know they have gray sheet right behind them, they have a lot of nice coins in their, in their booth, I would go up to them and say, you know, what's your price on this uh, certain coin that I'd be interested in? They'd pick it up and then they would instantly just turn around and grab their gray sheet off the back table. And at that point, that's indicating to me that they're going to use gray sheet and they know how to price coins correctly um, in their mind. And so what I would do then is I would at the same time pull up that coin in its particular grade on CoinFAX. And if the coin is selling for $25, $50 more than what's in gray sheet, then I'm looking at a certain return that would be favorable for me, especially with $100, $200, $300 coins, right? And so he ends up whipping out the gray sheet, looking through it, and he either wants to sell it at gray sheet, he wants to sell it over gray sheet, which basically happens all the time, um, or sometimes you just can't make a deal with them. But like I was saying, most of the time, they're gonna offer it above gray sheet, and so when they know that you know gray sheet, that's gonna be one of your weapons that you use uh, to make a good negotiation. And like I was saying before, I'm gonna look up that coin at the same time they're looking up the coin. Um, and I'm gonna pick up the coin and look at it. I instantly know what gray sheet is and what they're selling for. So that's a very important tool. And so they're gonna say, you know, say, the, say gray sheet's $100, they wanna offer it to me at $125, and it's selling around $115, right? And so what I would say to them is, how much closer can you get to gray sheet? I know it's $100. And I think that's a more that's a fair price for the coin. Um, and so what they would do is they would mold back in their mind, and they know uh, this isn't just an average collector. They end up spending thirty dollars a month on gray sheet. They know what I know, and most of the time that gives you the upper hand in a negotiation. And so sometimes they, you know, they would have a really high starting price, and then they would sell it to me at one hundred and five dollars, five dollars over gray sheet. So that's kind of a little bit on how you negotiate at coin shows. Uh, use your gray sheet because most of the time that's what they'll be looking at and also use what they're selling for as a tool to see if you can make any money at the same time. 
And once you use those and start to become familiar with them, especially when you're doing the negotiation, um, that'll be very helpful. And you know, if we're using a vice versa kind of method, if gray sheet's high on the coin and you really want it, um, and then the sold comps are under gray sheet, I would come to them and say, hey, you know, pull up the sold comps. Tell them, hey, you know, I know gray sheet's 100 on this coin, but the last ones that I've sold have been for 90, 85, 80. I really like this coin at $70. And you know you never know what you're gonna get from a dealer. They might have said they might say I've been holding this coin for a while. I don't know what to do with it. Seventy dollars and you can have it. Um, so a lot of things that you can do at coin shows, you just gotta play it by ear. You gotta be able to use these tools at your disposal and tell them that you have these tools um, because that's really gonna help you uh, with your next coin deal. But thank you guys for listening to this part of the video. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some coins and have a little bit of an intermission. All right, so wanted to take some time in this video to show you guys something cool that we've been working on for a while. This is the Freedom Coin Show, and basically we sit down with Royal Coins, Blake, me and Casey on the other side as you can see, um, and we talk about coins, we talk about business, uh, we talk about things in our personal life. Sometimes we get into politics, so watch out. Um, but if you want to check out the space, we got the mixer here. Uh, we got all the mics all set up. This is actually in a shipping container. You can actually hear the rain, which is a little bit annoying. But everything's set up the way we want it. A lot of it's on audio at this at this moment. But we really want to get some vi visual perspective for you guys. Um, but very happy with the things that we've uh, you know filmed so far. But if you guys are interested in listening to our podcast, we'll have a link down below, right below our uh, coin shop website, AkushaCollectibles.com. We really hope you guys can go over there and enjoy some stuff. Just, you know, listen on the way to work. Maybe if you have some time out in the garage, you know, anytime that you guys want to listen. But let's get back to today's video. Are you guys enjoying today's video? If you are, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts down below how you negotiate at uh, coin shows. And subscribe if you're new. New videos every week. Want to talk more about Gray Sheet. Want to talk more about uh, coins. And we can't wait to have you a part of our community, but let's get back to today's video. We talked about Gray Sheet and what it can do for you. They also have rates that they send people, um, you know, different quarterly rates and everything else that's very important. And they have a lot of things in this in this book that'll help you out a lot. They have CoinZip, they have different sellers and vendors on here that advertise um, different, you know, the fun show that you can see here. Just so many things that you can, uh, you know, tap into, especially when you buy Gray Sheet. And another plus of having Gray Sheet is that, you know, you're spending thirty dollars a month, and that may seem a lot to a lot of people. But if you're going to be very involved in this space, thirty dollars a month will save you so much time, so much energy at the end of the day, because you'll have that, you know, have this at your disposal to use um, in any coin negotiation, and that's vital. And that'll end up saving you well over thirty dollars a month. So weigh your odds, see how much, how dedicated you are, and it will really help you out. Now let's give uh, an in real life kind of scenario about what we're talking about here. If we take a look at this coin, this is an 1894 O Morgan dollar. A tough date, very tough in AU58. And when we take a look at this coin on Gray Sheet, Gray Sheet's gonna have this coin at $700. And when I was looking at auction records, this coin is around 725 is what it's selling for. So not much room for uh, you know margin in here. So. What I would say to somebody is, you know, if I was going to buy this coin in real life and I was at a show, I would say, hey, I know Gray Sheet 700 on this coin. Uh, you know, the market's going up pretty high and it's something that, you know, I really, really enjoy and really want to buy. Um, and so, you know, if, if it's selling for 725 and Gray Sheet's at 700, that means Gray Sheet's pretty high on this coin. And so what I would do is I would start them off. Maybe if I can get an offer in at 600, 625, just so I can make my margin just so I can uh, offer this coin to someone like you, you guys on here. Um, and so hopefully that guy helps you out a little bit. Start somewhere where you can actually make some money and you never know what you're going to run into. And sometimes, like I said, some people are just ready to get rid of some coins and you might be that lucky person. And it just taps you into more people that you can you know, work with in the future. It may not work with certain coins like this just because of how narrow it might be for both of you. But there are many instances where it's a little bit different for every single coin. But let's talk a little bit about these coins. This is an 1874S 
trade dollar great ms60 by pcgs you can see it's a little bit of kind of dirt or something on the coin still has a lot of nice underlying luster as you can see no ppc on the coin at all which is kind of cool when you flip it over the coin there is a lot of luster still in here you can see just the the cartwheels going a little bit of a spot uh, to the top left there but i just don't see too many of these in rattlers it's pretty hard to find um, especially you know mint state and so i kind of wanted to you know offer something interesting it is well above, above premium on, on something like this but you know finding these in old holders is pretty tough and so Hope you guys enjoy this part of the video just showing off a really interesting piece we love getting coins in like this always a challenge to understand and then market and then sell so this is a 1916 denver we were talking about in the last video that we got you know a little bit you know i got hurt by 16 denver there but we ended up getting our money back which was good um, and if we wanted to check out you know the mint mark here because the last one had one added this one you could see has a slight triangle in the center there um, and we were talking about if the coin was kind of AG or fair too, that you're going to see it mainly kind of filled into the coin. It's kind of be uh, you know, kind of rubbed in or circulated into the coin, but this one's a little bit of a better grade. So the mint mark is really evident on it. And so, uh, you know, just taking a look at this coin, it's a, it's a pretty decent one for sure. Has a lot of detail to it. Well, I think this is probably the highest grade uh, one I've bought in a while. So... Hope you guys do enjoy a coin just like this. I mean, it is a pretty expensive piece, but nonetheless, it's always nice to get a nice 1916 Denver in. Here is one we just talked about. This is 1894.0 Morgan dollar. Uh, prices have gone up on these like crazy, but you know, 1894, 1894S, 1894.0 is is probably the most common in terms of uh, the grade and the price shoot up. 94p is just one of the it's one of the toughest states. I think it has 110,000 mintage uh, right after 1893s there. So that's a coin that's a little bit undervalued in my opinion. But this one's still a nice wholesome example for AU58. Still has a lot of luster on the coin. A few little spots here and there, but overall still a pretty decent one for sure. Here is an 1883 no sense V nickel. These have been selling like crazy. Has a little bit of kind of toning to it, but nothing too spectacular. I do like the coin a lot. This is kind of the old holders video for sure, but has a few spots on the reverse here. Nothing to you know, nothing to get you know worry about at all. But I do like the coin. I do like the holder, and it's pretty uh, mark free, which is pretty awesome as well. I got some peace dollars in from the same dealer. This is a 1922 peace dollar, uh, grade MS64. And we've been, we've been adding these slowly to the website when we get them in, and they've been selling pretty quickly. And so we've been really thankful for everybody that has been jumping on the peace dollars. We normally don't buy too many, uh, but you know, especially if it's a common date. But these these coins are pretty choice in my opinion, and they have those older holders. Not sure what happened to them. If someone kind of you know had some old paper, or you know, I don't know what PCGS did either. Maybe someone drank their coffee over these. Very confused about the holders, kind of a little bit dingy to me. Uh, nice 1922 here, like I said, luster, really nice. You know, just the cream of the crop coins that you'd want to find back then. And uh, couldn't be more thankful to be offering these to you guys. And we're going to close out here with a nice 1922 uh, piece dollar as well. Really nice ones here. And what's kind of interesting, uh, which would happen a few days ago for us, we we uh, were, were sold these two by uh, one of our viewers. His name's Alan. Thank you, Alan, for the opportunity to buy stuff like this. We haven't uh, been able to keep most of our commemoratives, so when we can stock up on a few, that's really good. Let's start off with showing you guys a few of them real quick here. This is, uh, you know, a 1936 Denver, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, you know, I don't, I don't, I've never actually sold one before, but when I saw the ones that Alan offered us, the luster on these, um, and I do like the design as well. Nothing that's too distracting on the coin in terms of spots and the design is kind of, you know, it's kind of simplistic. You have a few words on the coin and you have him in the center there, but nothing like the Texas as you guys saw last video. Here's a 36S, kind of the same way here. Has a pretty big scratch kind of on the, uh, you know, right where his shirt is there, but, you know, pretty decent pieces for sure. One of the most common uh, commemoratives, the Booker T. Washington. 
plus some strong luster on this one. And so, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't pass up the whole opportunity to get these. They came on all in one bundle deal and arrived just on Monday morning. So it's it's pretty cool to see all these kind of come to come to me and Alan really knew what he was doing when he was picking these suckers out. I mean they're just they're just stunners. But got a lot of boons here as well. 1935D grade MS66. We're gonna kind of shoot through a few of these here. Don't want to take you guys too much time here, but you know, nothing really wrong with the coin. No PVC, no spots. A little bit, uh, you know, I think this was graded on the Econ. Looks a little bit nicer than the grade that was posted. This one has some some sweet luster on it. Nothing, no toning that's really distracting for it at all either. Sometimes you get that haze on the coin, but this one is just pretty strong. And it's a pretty affordable piece. Uh, I think this one is one of the highest mintages, so you can kind of see the cheaper price on the back. If you're wanting to find a boon uh, for your collection, got this nice 37D. has a little color to it as well. Uh, you know, kind of like a purplish terminal toning to it. Probably one of my favorites, the Kamems. Just has a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of character. What I normally like to pick up if I'm buying one in, in specific. Uh, we got a 36S here. So he, you know, he was buying a lot of coins, but this one has a little toning to it as well. A few spots on the head there, but kind of a pinkish toning, which I kind of like. And it has that also on the reverse here, as you can see. But, you know, pretty cool. And we got a 34, kind of, you know, it's, it, you kind of get bored looking at all of them, but I don't know. I think that offering all these, you know, people might want some for their set or have a hole to fill. And I think most of these are going to be, I don't know, maybe rising in value as the year kind of carries on. We have a few Arkansas also to show you guys. I got the 1936 Arkansas, a little bit of toning or haze on the obverse here. Uh, but you, as you can see, there's a little bit of color on the rim there. A little bit of green, a little bit of red. Pretty cool, for sure. I've uh, got one that's a little bit of more blast white. This one's 1935, great MS65. Really strong luster on the coin. Uh, really problem-free surfaces as well. Uh, definitely one that I would consider for a cat candidate, but I uh, do like that one a lot. And the last Arkansas we wanted to show you guys. A little bit of haze on this one too, but... Uh, is one of the tougher dates of the series and is in a series holder and so had to pick this one up also a little bit of a tougher date for uh, anybody that is really serious about the Arkansas set but thank you guys for taking a look at all these coins today we really did enjoy you guys uh, you know commenting and everything else and we really hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video where we talked about gray sheet and so let's cut it to the outro Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. It means so much to us. Uh, it helps us reach more people that we can you know, share numismatic content with. Uh, subscribe if you're new because new videos, like I say, every single week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5. And uh, yeah, comment your thoughts down below. All of this really means a lot to us and it really helps you know, bring our community closer together. And check out our website, kuchacollectibles.com, if you're interested in anything that you see today or coins that we showed off in the past that are still available. But we will see you guys in the next video.